What's up, Cal Gang? All right, we got this problem here. Um, I'm gonna keep it on the page because I don't really wanna like try to drive. But I'm gonna try later. Okay, so a grindstone uh, basically is turning and you're pressing this ax against it and it gives us this, uh, this change in rotation, right? Um, comes to rest in seven seconds. So yeah, it gives you how, much, how long it takes to stop. And it wants us to find the coefficient of friction. I always love trying to find the coefficient of friction because uh, it's fun, not really, but okay. So let's, let's try to visualize what's happening here by drawing a picture. So here's our grindstone, and we're applying this force against it, right? We're putting this force applied here, right? So that's gonna have a force normal, and then it's gonna have this coefficient, it's gonna have this force of friction, which is what we're gonna need. So here's the radius, so that's the radius of this thing. It is not given. Oh, okay, it gives us the diameter. Okay, I, give, I was given the diameter. Okay, so the diameter is 52 centimeters. It's gonna be 26, 0.26 meters. Okay, I spent a long time being dumb. Okay, so let's do this. So I wrote out this formula up here so I didn't forget it. Uh, is it in the glare? Yeah, it is, that's fine. You guys can see it fine. Okay, so the sum of the torques is equal to the sum of the forces times the radius times their theta. And that's also equal to the inertia uh, times angular acceleration. So we're not really gonna use this part, but that's just kind of showing what the true is equal to. So we can say the sum of our forces is gonna be equal to, so we have these three forces, right? So force applied, radius, sine, theta. But this theta, let's, let's try to figure out what these thetas are gonna be. So we have this line coming out from the radius. And if you wanna find that theta, it's gonna be kind of like, uh, you're gonna take it uh, here, and we're gonna just kind of draw an angle, what it's gonna be. So you can see our force applied is gonna be angle of zero degrees, right? degrees. Um, I guess we can I guess we can do it this way. And then we're gonna see that this is 180 degrees and then this is 90 degrees. So sine of sine of zero is zero and sine of 180 is zero. But sine of 90 is equal to one. So that kind of makes sense, right? Um, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly. Uh, anyway I guess this works out fine but Um, I guess I should do it like that, sure. How is this going? Okay, so let's, let's just do it anyway. So force applied, uh, radius sine of zero, plus force of friction, radius sine of 90, plus force of normal, radius sine of 180, is equal to I acceleration. So like I said, this is gonna become zero. This is gonna become zero. So we're gonna end up with this force of friction, radius, and then 90, so sine of 90 is one. So the force of friction times radius is equal to uh, inertia times angular acceleration. So inertia for a disc here, uh, if you have a solid disc, it's gonna be one half mass radius squared angular acceleration. So we can expand this out some more. I guess we can cancel out these radiuses or just cancel that down to one. So force, friction, they will one half mass radius. And then I'm gonna write this angular acceleration because we're getting the change of velocity over change in time. You know angular acceleration is change in angular velocity over change in time. So we have these two values. So now we can expand force of friction is force normal times the coefficient of friction is equal to one half mass radius change in W over change in time. Then we can just divide by force normal, which we know, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes, we are given a force normal. Get coefficient of friction is equal to one half. Uh, I guess we can kind of just write it like this: mass radius change in W over change in time divided by force normal. Okay, so quickly I want to notice that um, I, I did a little something wrong. Um, when I calculated the angles here, I went from here to here, but actually it should have been from here around all the way to here, which would give you force friction is equal to the 270 angle. This would still be zero, this would be 180, it'd just be reversed, but they'd both be equal to zero because they're perpendicular or whatever. So what would happen here is this becomes 270, and then sine of 270 is negative one. So this would be negative, 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 negative. Okay, uh, which is gonna make sense later because you're gonna find that this acceleration is negative, and then if you didn't have this negative here, you'd get a negative coefficient of friction, which is not right. Okay, so one final thing before we can calculate is we're giving the, um, 
the, the rotational uh, velocity in revolutions a minute, but that's not the SI unit. We want it in, um, what is it, radians per second. Okay, so we have 820 revolutions a minute. So then we want to get rid of those minutes, so we're going to put one minute that's equal to 60 seconds. So the minutes are going to cancel, and we're going to have it in reps per second. Nice. But then we want it in radians a second. So we know that one revolution is equal to two pi radians. So then the revolutions cancel out, and we're going to have it in radians per second. Do that number. Um, what do you get? 820 times 2 pi divided by 60. This is going to be 85.89 revolution or radians a second. So then what we can do is just plug all this in. So I'm going to move that negative over so it's going to be negative. So the mass is 50, the radius is 0 0.26, change in uh, velocity is that. So it's going to be final minus initial so it's going to be 0 minus 85.9 divided by 7 which is how long it took to get to stopping. And then 2 times the force normal which I think is 260, right? Yeah, probably. Okay, you plug this into your calculator, um, and you get 0 0.31, or 0 0.307, whatever you want to do. And there you go. That's the coefficient of friction. So I made some mistakes, but you just got to kind of like figure it out along the way. If you get a negative number, you're probably doing something wrong for a coefficient of friction. Um, yeah, so you kind of just have to sum up the torques and know some formulas and figure stuff out. I mean, it's just like, just keep solving a lot of problems. Just keep watching videos. It'll make more sense the more problems you do, the more you watch. So yeah, just keep it up, guys. Good luck on your physics homework. See you later.